everyone, welcome into One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today I am doing a special PSA reveal. I have two of them actually. The first one is going to be a crossover for Zach F. He's a Patreon of mine of a very cool Aaron Judge and Alec Manoa. Those were crossovered from KSA, which is a Canadian grading company, and we're crossing them over to PSA. And then I have a 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie card that we will reveal. And this is the card that created all of the hoopla behind the whatnot in national 2022 whatnot fiasco ken golden got involved and there was so much fallout from a bbce certified box that did not come out clean during the national now during that national i was able in the box that was not up to snuff even though it was BBCE certified, I was able to win during their promotion a 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan card. It came back an EX Mint 6, which is technically kind of a low grade, but still a collector grade level. And because of all the hoopla, what ended up happening is Whatnot said, we will open a second box. And I was lucky enough to win another Michael Jordan card. Now, the chances of that were so, so slim and none, but I was able to win one anyway, so we will reveal that. But first, we are going to start with the crossover from KSA for Zach. He is a Patreon of mine, and what I do for Patreons is I will grade cards at no additional cost other than what the grading cost is for the card. Now, you have to be a Patreon to do that. So if the grading cost is $30, $18, depends on what level it is. All you have to do is send me the grading fee. You do not need to have a PSA membership. You do not need to pay any of the insured shipping out to PSA. I cover all of that. So we did that. This is a crossover that we're going to do for Zach. And if you are interested in having your cards graded by PSA, there is a link to my Patreon page in the video description below. Check it out. You can join for as little as $2 a month. And you can get your cards, your cards graded at no additional cost other than what it costs to grade the card from PSA. So without further ado, let's see what we have here. Uh, good, they're going to be on the back. And it looks like we've got two cards. And it also looks like they've done something a little bit weird. There we go. So we'll do it like that. So our first card is gonna be the Alec Manoa. And this is a one of one auto. This is the Alec Manoa, I believe it's from 20, yeah, 2019 Bowman. This is the draft pick breakdown, number 11, Alec Manoa. You can see down here at the bottom, it is a one, let's see if I can get the good, there we go, a one of one. So just a beautiful one of one. So the Super Fractor, Alec Manoa, Bowman Scouts draft pick breakdown autographed card. Now this was a nine when it was a KSA card. KSA, if you're not familiar with them, they are a Canadian grading company. They actually grade cards pretty tough. So to get this to go from a nine to a 10 or something in PSA might be difficult. I believe it was a nine. So here we go. We've got... In fact, yeah, so that's what we have here. So you can see here the Alec Manoa came in as a mint nine from KSA, the Super Factor one of one. So let's see what it gets on the crossover from PSA. Zach, here we go. The Bowman Draft Super Factor Auto one of one also comes in at a mint nine. So it does not upgrade. However, my belief is because KSA is a lot less known here in the States, of much more known in Canada, especially for the hockey cards, but on a baseball card, probably much better to have this in a PSA slab. So we get the nine on the Super Fractor. Just a beautiful auto right there. Zach, congratulations on that one. We have the nine in the Alec Manoa. Now the next card, 
as a 2017 Tops Finest. It came in as a 9 with KSA. It is a Finest First Auto Green Refractor. It's going to be numbered to 99. Now, when he sent this in, that was a little bit before... Aaron Judge decided to go absolutely bananas and break the American League record for home runs in 2022 with 62 home runs. So this is one of his rookie cards. It is autoed. It is to 99. It was a mint 9 in KSA. And let's see what it comes back as in PSA. It will be... Also a mint nine. And again, I still believe that crossing this over into a mint nine PSA, this card absolutely gains more value in a PSA slab versus a KSA one. Again, especially being that it's baseball. So they stay the same. They both get mint nines and they had mint nines in KSA, but the value that you're going to get from PSA over KSA obviously makes it Kind of a simple choice to cross it over because you know it's going to get a good grade. KSA does grade cards legitimately. They are a very tough grade. So it does not surprise me that they both stay in nine. But the value that comes up on these with PSA over KSA, especially with baseball cards, going to be a very good value. So, Zach, congrats on both of those. And now I'll get to the story which I shared a little bit of to begin this video. This was the first card. It normally sits here during my streams, and that is the first Michael Jordan card. Now, when this came back a six, if you look at it, it is a very centered card for an 86 Fleer. The reason I believe it came back as a six is if you look real closely right here, a little to the left of the Michael Jordan name, there is a printing starburst with a little white dot. That is not supposed to be there. The edges on this card, very clean. The corners of the card, very nice. The, there is one little edge up here that might be a little sus if you will, but the centering on the back of the card may be a little bit left heavy over here and maybe a little bit bottom he or top heavy. But overall, a very well presentable six in PSA. But because of everything in social media, after the National, what WhatNot did is they teamed up with BBCE and they opened up a box of 86 Fleer absolutely free and to win one of the packs what they did is they had a big booth there where you had to do a horse race thing like you would see at a fair and if you won the thing you got to go reach in to a grab bag and grab a pack if you grabbed a pack that had a sticker on it that said the goat sticker that meant that you would get one pack of 1986 Fleer basketball out of the box that they opened on stage. When they opened it on stage, they had a bunch of big influencers in the hobby. Blez was the one that opened up my pack, but they had backyard breaks. I think Jeff Wilson even opened up a few packs. So a veritable who's who of influencers in the hobby opened up this box. Unfortunately, as the box got opened, and as it came out afterwards, after the National, it was discovered that the box, even though it was BBCE certified, did not have the right collation in the cards. Sports Card Radio, a very popular channel right now in the hobby as well, they called it out. It created an absolute firestorm and a bunch of bad press for everyone involved. They figured out that the box was actually sold by Golden Auctions, who has a quote-unquote reputable name in the hobby and it was bbce certified that's owned by steve hart who is the guy that certifies packs for psa is being untampered with and obviously the box was not a legitimate box it had been repacked jordans did come out of there i believe there were three jordans out of the box they all graded seven or below, at least on the base. I think there was two stickers as well. But with the collation, 
And if you know the collation of 1986 Fleer, it became evident that the box obviously had to have been a repack box, even though there were Jordans in it. Now, Whatnot, who did nothing wrong other than buy the box, which I believe they bought it for $161,000. That's how expensive boxes of those are. What they decided to do was buy another box. They had Ken Golden open the box over on Whatnot, and they ran a big risk because if that box wasn't clean either that would have been an absolute nightmare but everything worked out in the box and what they said was everyone that was entered to that had a chance of winning in the first box was going to get a second chance to win now for me i hit all, oh there goes my mic trout i had already won the six now the six is even at a six this card is still worth well into four figures so as they opened up the second box and they opened it up live on their live stream sports card radio had a big live stream about it probably their most successful live stream ever and it was all the rage in the hobby so as they're opening the box they get to my pack and i'm already happy i get that there was a lot of hoopla and there was a lot of you know uh what's the word i'm looking for there's a lot of controversy which seems to be so prevalent in the hobby and prevalent in society in my world i was like look i'm happy with the jordan six but i will always take another chance at another jordan rookie card why wouldn't you so as they open the pack they pull another Jordan. I'm going to try and mix in that video into this because I made a short out of it. I was absolutely stunned. Ken Golden pulled the card. So if I can get the video in, that video is going to start right now. We have 20 packs left. Okay. Okay. So here we are. So what are we on? Um, Dustin. Dustin P. Dustin P. Okay, Dustin P. Let's go, Dustin. Let's go. Let's do this right now. 
It was just a pure stroke of luck that lightning struck not once, but it struck twice for me. Now, on the second time, they did not grade the card on the spot. They said, you got to grade it yourself. So I, of course, said, well, you would be stupid not to grade it. So here, after much to do, is the final period on the fiasco that was the 2022 national 1986 Fleer box controversy, probably the biggest controversy in the hobby. And with a stroke of luck, I was the guy that benefited most out of it. So I personally want to thank Whatnot for doing it. And I personally want to thank them for doing the right thing, which is making it right for your audience and for your customers. So here was the card that Ken, that Ken Golden pulled. And he pulled it, asked me if I was his friend, which I don't know the guy. I mean, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's a good guy. Um, He's got a he's got a good reputation in the hobby and a bad reputation all at the same time. But in fairness, he's been in the hobby forever, um, so he knows his stuff. He opened this card. Now, here's my belief. When I saw the card, when it came in, because they mailed it to me. It took them forever to mail it to me. The card is heavy on the bottom. Definitely not centered. I knew it wasn't going to get a 10, but it is centered well left to right. And again, the corners look real nice on this card. The only corner that was a little suspect was maybe the upper right-hand corner. I don't know if you can catch it on there, but a maybe a little bit. When I put it under the loop, though, all these corners look good. When we go to the back, we have... A pretty centered card, maybe a little left heavy, but overall, as 86 Fleer goes, this card, a very good representation of the Michael Jordan rookie card, although we, I know it wasn't going to get a 10. Here's what the Jordan gets, and we add it to the collection. So, the 86 Fleer Jordan gets a near mint eight. So the near mint eight is selling again well into four figures, somewhere between six thousand and seven thousand dollars. Here's what I plan on doing with the card. Right now, because of the way the market is, I will probably hold it for a little bit. In my world, I like that the six is the one that I won at the national. So I actually think the better story is the one from the national because I won it. I was there in person. Blaz pulled it. I was. It was all the rage. Everyone at the national was like, "Oh my gosh, you won this thing! It was awesome!" So this one sentimentally holds more value monetarily obviously this one holds more value if someone that collects more baseball cards than i do basketball cards i'm going to be happy with an 86 jordan that is a six i will probably one day sell the eight with the intention of turning that in to a down payment or a very large payment on a dream car for my wife, which I think speaks to a bigger thing in the hobby. A lot of people talk about getting rich. A lot of people talk about these are the cards to invest in. A lot of people talk about this is what the hobby's up to now. A lot of talking heads all over on YouTube and all over on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot everywhere. And all these people are going to tell you about the investments and this and that. Keep in mind one thing. I'm going to keep the six because there's a sentimental value. You can never forget that cards can hold a monetary value. But then the question I would ask anyone that's watching this video is the card valuable is the money valuable or is something else more valuable in your life that might hold some sentimental value as well because i don't think you can put a price on sentimental value 
And when you get lucky and pull a monster card or win a whatnot contest and get not one but two Michael Jordans, I like collecting cards, so I'm going to keep one. This one, I don't think it's the right time to sell, but when I do think it's the right time to sell, my intention is to turn it into something that I will also enjoy. And so as we talk about investing and we're going to get rich on cards, the reality is that's probably for 99% of you not going to happen. If we look at this as sentimental value, and if you look at it even in the investment world of, can I turn a card that I pulled into something that outside of cards is also valuable to me and use cards as an avenue to help pay for some of that? I think that is the spirit of card collecting here in the 21st century. A lot of these cards that have high value now, Fernando Tatis comes to mind, might not have a lot of value tomorrow. Some that don't have a lot of value yesterday might not have a lot of value tomorrow. This card two years ago or even a year ago was not worth nearly what it is today. So when you think about it and collect what you want and collect who you want and stop listening to the talking heads and stop taking it as holy grail advice, that's when you're going to find much more enjoyment in the hobby. And that, I believe, is when you'll find your luck gets a little bit better. Don't worry about how much stuff is going to be worth. Worry about how much enjoyment you're getting out of it and realize that cards aren't the only place that you can find enjoyment in life. So with this card, my intention will be to give my wife an El Camino, a Ford El Camino. She's always wanted one. This will not pay for the whole thing, but it will help pay for a lot of it. And that I think is a really cool thing to turn a sports card into. That may not hold true for everyone. For me, it does. But as you think about it, there's all, I know a lot of people that have sold cards because they've got to go pay for a new water heater or something like that in their house. But they use cards to pay for things that they need and want in other areas of their life. And they get the collection out of collect, they get the enjoyment out of collecting cards in the process which also holds value. So as we think about the hobby, that may be my little bit of advice on it. You can take it or leave it. It's just advice and it is just my opinion. So let me know in the comments below what you know, what you think about the crossover and what you think about the two Michael Jordans in the story. I would love to hear your thoughts about whatnot and all of the influencers and all of that. It was a wild, wild ride over the late summer months talking about the national and all of these cards. So would love to know what your final thoughts are on that and it's just amazing to me that i had not just a little stroke of luck but lightning struck twice and these are two cards i never thought i would have in my possession but here they are sitting right in front of me for me i think what not for doing the right thing and i thank my daughter for telling me i want to play that horse game because it looks fun at first i told her i didn't want to play it because i had a lot of stuff to do that day at the national but my wife told me she wants to play the horse game so I did. I sat down. I won the horse game, got the pack, and it turned into this, which may eventually turn in to a Ford El Camino, which would be absolutely amazing. So with that, guys, I hope when you're out there in the wild, you are finding the cards that you want to find. And when you open those packs, I hope that you rip fire. And as always, be good to your family. Be good to your friends. Be good to your neighbors. I appreciate you watching today. Take care. We'll do it again soon.